Hey there and welcome back to Mass Effect. My name is Pete and today for this very special 50th episode of our Mass Effect Insanity walkthrough we will complete the squad member assignment for Rex. Last time we did the assignment for Garrus, that was a rather short video and so I thought well let's continue down that path and do the assignment for Rex next. As you can see the video is once again not too long but it provides us with a much more difficult challenge. But more on that when we get there. For now we can activate the galaxy map. Leave both the Herschel system and the Kepler Verge. And then travel to the Argus Row Cluster. And in here we want to head to the Phoenix system. There are a total of 5 planets in the system, two of them however belong to the Pinnacle Station DLC, so we won't bother with those for the moment. Instead we'll first grab ourselves some Samarium on Patashi and then find a Cobalt deposit on Vebinok. Those are the only two planets that can be surveyed in this system, so let us now land on Tuntau where the Rex Family Armor assignment will take place. For our squad we will of course take Rex, but we definitely need another biotic for this mission. Liara would be optimal, but then we won't have any tech abilities, so we'll have to settle with Caden. And I will explain the reason for that in just a second. Alright, first things first, before we get moving, let's quickly upgrade Caden's pistol a bit. And we can also change his biotic amp to one that provides a much higher cooldown bonus. And with that out of the way, we can now mark what is called a hidden structure on the map, and that will be the location for the assignment. Now the reason I brought Caden along instead of let's say Garrus, um, the main reason is Caden has lift available. And the upcoming fight will be pretty tough without an ability that can immobilize enemies for a longer period of time. I don't want to take away too much, I will talk strategy a bit more once we get into the fight, but if we decide to bring Rex along, which I think we should, then Caden for me is the best choice for the third squad member spot in this assignment. Maybe at this point also a bit of background info on the assignment itself. We are looking for Rex Family Armor, a piece of ceremonial armor that has been handed down from generation to generation in Rex Family. However, now it has fallen into the hands of the Turian pirate Ton Actus. Actus has a hideout here on Tuntau, and that is exactly where we have arrived now. There is a bit of protection out front, but nothing too spectacular. The pirate here goes down pretty quickly after being hit with an overload and a warp, and with what remains of our overkill ability, we can also quickly dispose of the two snipers in the back. Alright, that's business taken care of for now, let us now head inside. That's it. Bag him and tag him. This is the place. My armor's here somewhere. Alright, with Rex telling us that we have indeed found the right place, it is now time to upgrade Caden before we start the combat. With Caden, we have 4 talent points to spend and I would like to put them all in medicine. That will give us advanced neural shock and I think we still have enough level ups left to get that up to master level. Then we can also quickly put 2 armor upgrades on Caden, I forgot that earlier. And now we can get things started with a bang. We can fire one shot to alert our enemies and then use overload to detonate the fuel tank on top of the balcony here. This has a good chance to insta kill at least one enemy and it will also severely damage a few others. We have one pirate over here that was stupid enough to rush in alone, so we can immobilize him with a throw. Once he gets up we will immediately hit him with neural shock to bring him back down and that's our second kill for the area. Just a few seconds later our main antagonist lurks around the corner and just like the pirate before he seems to be mostly on his own. He does however have an activated immunity ability, so before we really engage we want to wait for that to wear down. Right here we are and now we can hit him with the aforementioned lift warp combo. This will not only leave him flying helplessly through the air, warp will also increase the damage our bullets do and if we add overkill to the mix then we should be able to take down Tarnactus rather quickly. We can also quickly dispatch off the sniper here in the back. He did land a good hit on Rex, but with him out of the way we have now dealt with both long range opponents. The first one died in the explosion earlier. That is probably the strongest enemy of the area already dealt with, but to be honest the other pirates are really not that much weaker. All of them also have both immunity and shield boost available, which makes taking them out a tedious task. And you can see how incredibly valuable Caden's lift ability is in these situations. 
Without it, we would only have the occasional throw available, and in most cases the enemies would just be able to run away, hide behind cover, use either immunity or shield boost, or in the worst case scenario both. Oh, and did I mention they also have health regeneration? In short, without any form of immobilizing abilities, preferably lift or singularity, this fight can quickly turn into a nightmare, especially on insanity difficulty. And here you can also see that we normally want to wait for immunity to wear off before hitting warp, because this pirate here still has immunity activated, and you can see that even with warp and overkill, taking him down takes quite a long time. We eventually managed to do it anyway, and that now leaves only one more pirate, and surprise surprise, that one also has immunity activated. A throw takes him down, and while he's on the floor, immunity thankfully wears off, so now we can hit him with sabotage, and then just wait until he gets back up, hit him with neural shock, and our assault rifle should take care of the rest. Wonderful, this earns us a level up, and the area is now cleared, meaning we now get to loot the place, and let's start right here in the back. On the table to the left here, we can find a med kit, then a crate on the opposite end of the room, and right next to it, a hardened crate locked behind hard decryption. And this is the second reason why bringing Caden along proves invaluable in this assignment. If we brought Liara along, we would have a few more biotic abilities available, but we would have no other choice than to leave all these crates locked. Of course, you could always bring a combination of, let's say, Liara and Caden, which for this assignment might just be the best suited squad, because you would then have available two lifts, two throws, warp, singularity and neural shock, which is definitely a better portfolio of talents than what we just fought with, but just like in the last mission, I think it would be a borderline insult to not bring Rax along on this assignment. Now we have made it to the point where we can complete the assignment. We can of course first loot a variety of kits here, but the object of interest is the wall safe. From what I understand, the level of decryption on this safe can actually change, so it might be a good idea to bring someone with master decryption along. This is it. I can't believe my ancestors ever wore this piece of crap. But at least I've got it back. Now, it seems like the armor isn't particularly useful, but if it means something to Rex, then having it back is of course great. I'm glad we could help you get it back. I might just be starting to like you, Shepard. Right, a rare emotional moment here between Rex and Shepard. Let's now proceed with the level up. For Shepard, we can put the point in sniper rifles. This will unlock advanced assassination and leaves us with only 4 more points to spend until we have sniper rifles maxed out. Then for Caden, we continue in medicine, only 2 more points until we have master neural shock. And with Rex, we will work our way towards advanced barrier. And also the unlocking of stasis, which I want to get at least 1 point in. And now we can make our way back to the entrance and back outside. In total, we now have 4 more points of interest on Toontao to visit, that will however not take too long, and once we're back on the Normandy, we can then also have a quick conversation with Rax, which should be the icing on the cake for this assignment. For our first point of interest, we have to travel quite a long way actually, and no, even if it looks like it, there will be no Thresher Maw on this large flat area. Instead, let me quickly mention a few interesting facts about the planet that we're on. At first sight, Toontao actually looks like a bit of an ice world. That, however, is not the case. With a surface temperature of roughly 20 degrees Celsius, the planet is rather temperate. The white crust on the planet's surface might come from a large concentration of sodium, which, at least on our planet Earth, often appears in a silvery white. But enough of the chemistry, we have now reached a lithium deposit, which we can survey for some experience points, but no money. If you remember, we are already at the credit limit, so we sadly can't acquire any more. Not that we would need to. While this first location was not marked on the map to begin with, the second point of interest, however, is... It is named Debris initially, but as we get closer here, we can see what we're actually dealing with. Lying right in front of us is another crashed probe. Salvaging this one requires master electronics, once again a very good argument to have Caden in the squad, but of course you could also do the mission with your preferred squad for that, then return to the Normandy and then go back to Tuntao with a more tech heavy squad, which will then take care of all the looting. Since Caden, however, does a very good job of combining the essential skills for combat in this assignment with the essential skills for looting, simply bringing him along should make the assignment easy enough to complete, and it will also save you a bit of time and one additional trip. Our third point of interest is now this mercury deposit here. Once again, we get a few experience points here, but no additional credits. And then we can travel to the last site on Tuntao, which is marked as an anomaly on the map. This location is actually pretty close by, and once we get over the hill here, we can also see what we're dealing with. This is, I believe, the third of these pyramids that we've found so far in this playthrough. And as we were already able to learn, those are of Prothean design. 
Interestingly enough, however, instead of a Prothean data disk, we can find some Asari Matriarch's writings here, which might be a result of the crash landed Asari capsule here. With that collected, we have now done everything we can on Tuntau and can return to the Normandy. Welcome back, and like I said, there is one more thing that we want to take care of. With Garrus, we were able to have a rather short but insightful conversation after completing his assignment. And with Rex, we will also be able to have that, but the conversation will be even shorter. Shepard. As you can see, Rex does not initiate dialogue about his armor himself, so we have to go with the family option here, even though we technically already asked him that. The answer will be slightly different this time, though. You must have family other than your father. Don't you miss them? No. Now that I have my family's armor again, there's nothing left for me. And yeah, that is about all that Rex has to say about his armor at this point. So long, Rex. Shepard. So, we can now once again make the cut. I have two more assignments planned, those should then hopefully take us to level 50. And once we are at level 50, we can make the long-awaited return to the Citadel. For now, I can say thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.